All right, welcome everyone. So what we're talking about now is fame. It's the whole idea of switching back and forth with the mole to four different, different types of particles. We're gonna talk about switching to formula units, to atoms, to ions, and to molecules. So the first thing is, what are examples of these four things? So we have F, and F is gonna stand for formula units. F is for formula units. And what's A for? Atoms. Atoms, very good. And I is for? Ions. And then M is for? Molecules, okay? So this was just something that I came up with just so that you could see what those four units were that we talk about. So we know that one mole is equal to that big number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now we said anythings, anythings, but really, we only talk about really small things, about having a mole of things that are really small, things that you can't see with the eye. And so we talk about having a mole of formula units or atoms or ions or molecules. What's an example of a formula unit? Well, formula units are made, as, made of cations and anions. So an example would be something like table salt, like? ICL. Awesome. Or you could have something like calcium fluoride, CAF2. You could also have something that has a polyatomic ion in it, maybe like um, Mg. We could do Mg3 parentheses PO42. So anything like that would be uh, a formula unit. Okay. Now we've got atoms. So atoms would just be single atoms. So anything from the periodic table that's not diatomic. So something like copper or silver Ag, or maybe it's something like carbon C, okay? So any single atoms from the periodic table. Ions are particles that carry a charge. charge. So now we would say having like copper with a plus two charge, or maybe silver with a plus one charge, or we could have chlorine with a negative one charge. Maybe it's a polyatomic ion. So maybe it's something like sulfite with a negative two charge, SO3 with a negative two, okay? So those are gonna be ions. And then the last thing is molecules. Molecules are made of two or more nonmetals. Very good. So they're also, there's a whole group of the molecules and it's Mr., everybody say his name? Brinkelhoff, Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2O2, and F2. Okay, and so there are other molecules like carbon monoxide or water, H2O, okay? Carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. So these are all going to be molecules, or even like the alkanes. Like remember methane, ethane, remember what comes next? Propane, butane. So methane, like CH4, do you remember what octane would be? C8H. You're close, good, 18, awesome. You times two and plus two, okay? So those would also be considered molecules. So now, we're not talking about molar mass. We're not talking about liters per mole. So we do have a ratio for liters per mole, and we have a ratio if you're trying to change from grams to molar moles to grams. But now, what if you're trying to change from one of these to moles or the other way? So now this question says, how many atoms are in four moles of tin? So if I told you that I had a container that had four moles of tin atoms in it, and I wanted to know actually how many atoms there were, well, that's pretty easy. Because if you know how many one mole is, what's one mole? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, then how can you do four moles? Just times by four. But we're going to do these bridges just because I want to ensure that you're going to do it properly when you have five. Okay? And that way you know that if it's going five across that you're doing everything properly. So we're going to circle atoms in the margin. And we're going to write 4.00 moles of tin, which is SN. We're going to throw in a bridge. And the last step is cross your units opposite. So moles of SN. All right, well, the ratio is how many moles? One mole. And how many particles? We're looking for atoms. So we're not doing liters or grams. So we don't need an L chart, and we're not using 22.4 liters. Instead, we're using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, you're going to write fame. You're going to write SN. And then you're going to circle what tin is. Which one of these would tin fall under? Well, it's just single atoms, right? So that would be atoms of tin. And so now you're going to plug this into your calculator. And if you plug this into your calculator, you're going to get 2.408 times 10 to the 24th. And now 
that's atoms, so I'm going to use the A, that's atoms of tin. Now, we know that this answer is not done yet because we have to do our sig figs. Sig figs. Okay, so how many sig figs in 4.00? Zeros to the right? Yep, so three, good. And 6.02? That zero is trapped, so three. So we've got three, three, so we want to round this to three sig figs, which makes it 2.41 times 10 to the 24th atoms of tin. Okay, and really you just plug this into your calculator, so you don't need to do any of that in your head. Now let's try this one. This says how many molecules, so MOLC, which is weird, is the abbreviation for molecules. Mol, mol is MOL, and MOLC is molecule, are in 4.00 moles of chlorine gas. But chlorine gas is not Cl, it's Cl. Cl2, because it's part of Mr. Winkelhoff. Throw on a bridge. Pressure units opposite, I've got moles of Cl2. Well, it doesn't matter. One mole is always how many particles? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd fame, F-A-I-M, Cl2. So now you have to circle what Cl2 is. Well, where would Cl2 fall? Molecules, good. Cl2 is actually a molecule, which is great because I wanted molecules. So I would do the same calculation in my calculator, and again, I would get 2.408, and I'm going to round it to three sig figs because it's the same exact thing. So I'm going to get 2.41 times 10 to the 24th. Now it's molecules of Cl2. So that's a 2.41. Okay, now it says how many atoms of chlorine is this? Well, it's not CO2 anymore because now I want atoms. So here's a question. If I had five Cl2 molecules, five Cl2 molecules, that could look something like this. Cl, 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 and Cl, Cl. Each one of these dashes is represented as one. So if I have five of these, the question is, how many atoms do I have of Cl? Ten. Ten. Very good. There are two for every one. So what ratio can you come up with? Could you say in every one molecule, in every one molecule of Cl2, what's my ratio? For every one molecule of Cl2, there are two atoms of Cl. That's a ratio. And a ratio you can write as numerator denominator. And it can be flipped depending on how you need it. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take this answer here, because we were already in molecules, so there's no need to start back at moles. So I'm going to start with 2.41 times 10 to the 24th molecules of Cl2, and I'm going to throw in a bridge. And cross my units opposite molecules of Cl2. And now I'm just going to use that ratio that we just came up with. In one molecule, how many atoms do I have? Two. Two atoms of Cl. My molecules will cancel out. And I'm left with atoms, and so I get 4.82 times 10 to the 24th atoms of Cl. Okay? Okay, so now we've got the last problem here. And this is asking, how many total atoms are in 0.5 grams of tin 2 chloride? This is probably the hardest type of problem that you're going to get. So the first thing is we're going to circle what we want, which is total atoms. So now we're looking for the total number of atoms. We're going to write what we've got. We've got the 0 .500 grams of tin 2 chloride, which again, we already talked about this, was SN with a plus 2 and Cl with a minus. So when you crisscross it, you get SnCl2. Then we're going to throw in a bridge, and we cross our units opposite. So we've got grams of SnCl2 down on the bottom. Okay, so if we're in grams, we have three sets of ratios that we can use. One thing that we can do is if we look at the periodic table, we've got this red number, and that red number tells us how many grams there are per, remember, per mole. So that's grams per mole. And they call them AMUs, but that's grams per mole. And anytime that you need a ratio and you need to switch between grams and moles, or moles and grams, that's what you're going to end up using. Now, the other thing that you can do is we talked about liters per mole. And so up on the top of this page, we were talking about the fact that if you have a box that's 22.4 liters, that represents one mole as long as you have a gas at STP. So that's if you want to get a ratio from either 
leaders to moles or moles to leaders. And then you're going to use this one. The last one that we talked about is right now. We're saying one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd fame. And fame is formula units, atoms, ions, or molecules. So if we come down here, we're starting with grams. And so the first ratio that's going to help us is first going from grams to moles. And how do we go from grams to moles? We have to use an L chart. So I'm going to L chart this. So over on the side here, now we did it on the page before, but over on the side here, I'm going to do a quick little L chart. So we're going to inventory this. We've got SN and CL. So it's 1 and 2. And so we look at SN and it's 118.7, and we're out to the tenths place, and CL is 35.5. And so I've got 118.7 plus 71. So it's 189.7 grams for every one mole. So if that's the case, then it's not one gram, it's 189.7 grams for every one mole. So again, this ratio could be flipped. It's almost like saying that you've got 60 seconds in a minute. You could say one minute is 60 seconds, or you could say 60 seconds is one minute, but you cannot say 60 minutes in one second. So it's the same thing. It's actually incorrect to say 189.7 moles for every one gram. That doesn't make sense. So it's always one mole, and then the grams go with the, um, the number goes with the grams. So now I'm in moles of SNCL2, but I'm not done. Because I don't want moles, I want atoms. So now I'm going to write moles across on the bottom, because when you write it across, it'll cancel out. So now I'm in moles, and I know that I can go from moles to atoms by using fame. So I'm going to say one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd F A. I N. And this is SNCL2. Okay. Well, here's the problem. SNCL2 is not an atom. So if we go back up to our fame chart, SNCL2 would fall under a formula unit. And the reason why is if it's made of a metal and a non-metal, then that means that it's going to be a formula unit. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say that this is a formula unit. So that means I'm not done because I want atoms, but I'm in formula units. So now I've got one more step left to go. So I'm going to do one more bridge, and I'm going to write formula units down on the bottom. So I'm going to write formula units down here. And now I want to try to get from formula units to atoms. Well, this is made, this one formula unit is made of atoms. And so the question is, how many total atoms do I have? Well, I can see that I've got one tin, I wrote it right here, and I've got two chlorines, I wrote it right there. So how many total atoms do I have? Three total atoms, so I would say in every one formula unit, I have three total atoms. So now all we're going to do is we're going to multiply and divide. So in my calculator, I'm going to say 0 0.5 times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 3 times 1 also, but you can ignore that. Then you want to divide by the 189.7. So divided by the 189.7, divided by 1, divided by 1. And I'm going to write this small. I'm getting 4.760147, and it keeps on going, times 10 to the 21st. Okay, let's do our sig figs. Zeros to the right, as long as there's a decimal in sight, that's 3. This is 4 right there. All those numbers are uh, 1 to 9. This zero is trapped, so that makes it three. This here you don't count because it's a count. Anytime you count something, it's exact. So it's an infinite number of sig figs, meaning that that's just not three. It's 3.00000000 on forever. So if I look at which one's the least, three, four, and three, or infinite, the least one would be three. So I'm going to put down this to three sig figs. One, two, three, and look there. Okay, so my answer is 4.76 times 10 to the 21st, and now it's total atoms in SNCL2. Okay, and then we're going to talk about um, this switch it thing, which is really cool, but basically this is going to be our track and our little cheat sheet for going back and forth from one unit to another. So you can actually go from one place to another simply using this. Where if you're starting at grams and you want to go to moles, you're going to use an L chart. If you want to go from moles to grams, you're going to use an L chart. It's just that you're either multiplying or dividing. That depends on which way you're going. 
And really the easiest thing to do is if you're starting with moles, then you're going to have moles on the bottom and grams on top. But if you're starting with grams, then you're going to have grams on the bottom and moles on top. And so depending on which one you're starting with will determine whether you're going to multiply or divide. That's the only thing. And the number one is always going to go with the mole unless it was the number given to you. So that would be the number given. So that would be your molar mass or that L chart number that you get rounded to the tenths place. So you could also go from moles back to fame. And the way you do that is you use one mole of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You could go moles to liters using 22.4 liters in a mole. And then the very last one, which is the last step that we did here, was what happens if you are asked to go from formula units or molecules into atoms or ions, okay? Formula, and formula units and molecules are made up by atoms or ions. And so you can switch between them simply by counting. All you have to do is count how many atoms or ions there are in one formula unit or in one molecule. And so I'll explain that a little bit more when we go to do the switch it thing too. And that's basically it for switching from moles to